Hi, happy Sunday morning there YouTubers, um, hope this finds you well. This is, a, um, I've done a, a few chitty chatties before, I never really thought about calling it a, a vlog, but I suppose in a sense it is. Um, and as one of the things I always wanted to do when I started doing this, apart from <laughs> learning how to do all the stuff that I still haven't really learnt, um, was a bit of a record of what I'm doing and where I'm going and things like that. Um, an idea I stole from Sandy. Thank you Sandy, you know, something, you know, someday I can look back on it, maybe my kids might or kids kids or something um but yeah so it's a bit of a bit of a bit of a ramble and a couple of bits i just want to uh stress again um on a couple of things which i'll get to in a minute which obviously put in the title um but yeah it's just i just feel like i've had i've been going at this now for 18 19 months since i first thought that's it i want to get better at my knife making get some proper equipment together um you know so maybe Hopefully, I've said from the beginning, you know, I was hoping to turn it at least to start with into a self-funding hobby. It's it's probably at that stage now. Um, I'm starting to sell enough gear to actually replace the things that I'm using. So it's it's almost now, <laughs> just completely forget about the cost of the equipment and the machinery and things like that. But going forward, the things I'm actually doing is, it's, you know, it's just pain, it's pain for itself. I'm certainly not a wage or anything like that. I'm not really getting anything out of it that way. It's all got enough, too much gear to buy. Um, but yeah, it's taken me 18 months, um, but what I'm realising is that trying to fit something like this in to take it to something a bit beyond a hobby and do a full-time job and help run a house which needs a lot of doing, you know, a lot doing on it. We've only been here a couple of years, there's still plenty of work that needs growing on it. Oh, that's what the most beloved keeps telling me. So I'm just rambling this out actually, I'm just waiting for the most beloved to get finished sorted. We're actually going to go for a walk this Sunday morning, first time in quite a while. Um, it's just time. Um, but I think you know I'm trying to put something in place now where I'm going to try and alter my life a little bit and maybe start doing this you know and get more time because the times that I've taken odd days which I've mentioned before just get so much more done than trying to cram an hour in here an hour in there and I'm no spring chicken I'm not, <laughs> I'm not, <laughs> you won't believe me you know but I'm not you know so to come home after a you know especially a busy day at work and then sort the dogs out do day to day so it's bloody tiring you know and then try to get the other jobs done so I'm gonna have to cut my cough cloth even um, that means you know biting the bullet um, you know I'm trying to I've spent quite a bit of time just recently and I have been moving and I, I suppose in the back of my mind I've been moving towards doing this for a while and um, I'm trying to put some of my consumables together so I've got enough to keep me going for a little while and hopefully I can try and do something with that um, and turn this into a bit more than just a hobby and turn it, actually take it to the next step which will be a, a part-time sort of role and then keep up with obviously other work and things as long as I can keep paying the mortgage and you know my way then that's fine so that's where I'm at so there should be some changes there pretty soon I hope um, yeah there's, it's just sort of like trying to do that and then coming into the shop and I, because obviously I don't just come in here and I'm I, any guys who make knives you know what I'm talking about if you do a few I don't just come in here and make a knife and start finishing off I go there's all the other I mean here I have which I started a little while ago is a pack of um, Pariri blocks that I've tried to stabilize anybody knows about these um, I, I have these in a really good full vacuum well for, I'm calling it a full vacuum it's as good as mine my kit gets my um, dual vein whatever um, everything else I've done absolutely spot on. Had them in there for about like six hours, no more air coming out of them. Um, put exactly the same seal as actually as normal. Took the vacuum off them and left them for nearly a week and they soaked up absolutely bugger all resin. Um, when I took the weights off the jar, they all floated to the surface. So, a bit strange really. Um, so, but, I mean, they're, they're a solid, hard wood anyway, must be close, and all I can think of is that they are so close grained, and I don't think they're particularly oily or resinous, because not much came out into the um, stabilising fluid, you know, so I don't think it's that, and maybe just that, the fact that they're just such a tight, close, hard grain, they just, the resin just didn't go in, anyway, I, I baked them, to, so at least, you know, I, I made sure the, uh, the resin's hard, but, so again, experimenting, it's trying to learn things and do things all the time. Just this morning, I've just got. I'm just finishing off a sheath here. Um, for well, I'm finishing off a knife set for a, um, a chap, Ulrich. So what belong Ulrich? You probably don't even watch this. You're back in Denmark, but you know. Um, so I've I've got this sort of like got to here and clamped up. 
Um, so that can be left now and then I'll finish, I'll move on to the cleaning it up and stitching and all that kind of stuff um, probably later on this afternoon. Yes, I'm doing that. Another thing is I've, I've been doing quite a bit of development on knives. Um, like I say, I spent a long time coming up with something which my son originally wanted, which I still haven't finished testing, but I will, I will test. I'll smash the edge to bits and a bit. I've done the bendy stuff, but I'll get to it in a bit at some point. <laughs> um, just to check my heat treat and things. Um, but from the knife I made him, I've, I've done this, I've been heat treated, I did one that and the handle wasn't right, so I reground it anyway. More took off the, uh, the sort of like scraping pommel, the skull crusher pommel, the scraping pommel, and things like that. Anyway, just made it into a more normal knife. But what I'm actually thinking is, for a more general purpose, especially over here with what a lot of people do, maybe maybe it needs to be a bit bigger. You know, I'm still in the European mindset of the the, the stereotypical bushcraft knife of, you know, sort of like the what's on there, just you know, the palm width, um, three or four mil. You know, I think unless you're going to break into a tree and jump on it, you, there's three mil is a far better stock size, better for slicing, better for cooking. More, I think it's just generically better for a lot more things other than splitting wood. And to be honest, I don't split wood. In fact, I hardly ever have fires. You know, in the in the summer it's too warm. In the winter, it, even then, it's it's bloody warm and dry and things. So I do have my little I have my little hobo stove now. You know, so really all I'm doing is cutting little bit, you know, splitting little tiny bits of wood for the hobo. But anyway, again, it's back to design and development. So every time I make something like this, it's it's all all that time and all the stuff that goes into it. And you know, and then I'm thinking about something else and what will sell, what won't sell, what would I like to use, what would work well over here. And then somebody comes along and requests something completely different, and I start from scratch again. So that's that's where all that's at. Um, so yeah, so hopefully there might be some big changes um, coming along soon. Get a bit more time to do a bit more of this. I've had a few videos I've managed to get up just lately. I've got a couple more to put together from a couple of trips. Um, I've got a trip coming up in a couple of weeks. And again, all that kind of stuff, the stuff I came, I want to do, getting out there and doing it, as I say over here. I want to get out of there and do it. Um, it's hard to do that and do all, you know, fit what is a, a hobby in. You know, the knife making has been a full-time hobby for 18 months plus. Um, but I need to get out and do the other stuff, and I want to film that as well. I've got a trip down um, the Kaimanawas, we're going to chop her into the Kaimanawas, and we've got three days hunting, I'm taking a young a friend, um, I've got his uh, brothers over here from Denmark, so um, me, Ulrich, and then Simon from up the road, we're going to be chopper in and have three days in the Kaimanawas. Um, so, looking for Seeker, hopefully. Um, yeah, so that's that's next week, so that's that, you know, not next week, the week after, and then next week we might be shooting as well, so it, it, it all takes time out. So anyway, that's me. So the other couple of things I wanted to talk about, and one is knife sharpening. Now, the, one of the things I keep forgetting to say, I mean, I've stressed and stressed and stressed that when you're sharpening a knife, basically, you know, no matter how big it is, no matter what it is, you have to sharpen the bevel, the whole bevel, flat or convex, as the case may be. I think we've got kids next door. Anyway, I'm just going to shut the door. <laughs> Your little buggers. Um, so yeah, and I, so I, that's a big thing I stress. That a lot of people seem to forget. They'll put it onto the stone and they go one way. Then the next time it goes on, it's a different angle. Then the next time it goes, it's a different angle, and then oh, you end up with boggled edges and round edges, and they never get the actually. Um, so I've stressed that. But something I keep forgetting to say, and it actually dawned on me the other day when somebody was saying, well, "How long does it take? And can you sharpen a knife for me? And how long does it take? How much does it cost? You know, whatever." And I said, "Well." Oh, because I can, you know, I've got my jigs, I can get an angle on there really, really quickly, I can do it from, when I used to do things by hand, it took a lot longer. And that's what made me think, you know, you've got to remember when you're sharpening a knife that basically what you're doing is you're taking a piece of hardened, tempered steel and you're rubbing it with something that is, relatively speaking, really quite fine. You know, as soon as you get past the core stone, it's quite fine. It takes a long time to wear the steel down. It is not a two minute job to sharpen a knife by hand. If you've got a bit of a blunt edge, I would, I'd expect 20 to 30 minutes to take a really knackered edge to a proper edge. That's, you know, and most people think, oh, it's a, you know, they spend sort of like two or three minutes. My lad's the same. He'll spend two or three minutes on the stone and go, oh, it's blunt, it don't work. Oh, 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 I can't do it. Oh, oh, you do it. You know, and the reality is it's not a two or three minute job. It takes a long time to wear hardened steel down with basically what is at the end of it, if you think about fine emery paper, even if you're using chapstones, diamond stones, anything else, 
it's the same sort of thing. You just rub your finger with a bit of really fine wet and dry. Take a bloody long time even to wear your skin down. So it takes a long time to sharpen a knife. You have to put the time in. You have to take the time. So you get onto your coarse stone if your knife is really blunt and you sharpen that one side until you get a burr. Then you turn it over, you sharpen that side until the burr turns the other way and it all looks flat. Then you go to your, if you start with extra coarse, you might go to coarse, then you'll go to um, medium, then you'll go to fine, then you'll go to extra fine, then you'll go to polishing, then you'll go on to a polishing strop, which I've just made some new ones off because mine were getting a bit manky, so I've made a nice, some nice double sided ones kept in the plastic. So that's basically, don't forget, if you sharpen your knife, it takes a long time, there is no shortcut. Even though I can do some of my stuff on the on the machines, you've got to keep the tape speed right down. You cannot let any heat get onto it, and it's not a two second job. You know, so you've got to allow time to do that, and you've got to spend the time on each grit and work your way down each grit one at a time, or you will not get a proper edge, and that's the reality of it. So when you think about that, actually paying somebody five dollars, ten dollars to to resharpen a knife, five dollars to polish it, ten or whatever, it's not bad. You know, you tell me out there, how many of you guys would do half an hour's work for five or ten dollars? Not many, I bet. So that's that. Knife sharpening. Next one. Ferro rods. And I keep, uh, this is another thing, I keep, I've stressed in all my videos, and I keep, people I know, guys who've bought these off me, you know, oh yeah, I'm struggling, I'm struggling. And I bet you, in every single case where they're saying, oh, I'm, I'm struggling, it's not... It's what they're trying to use to light it with. Oh, I've got a good piece of steel, or I've got a really good knife, or all of this to it. People are not listening. You have to have a sharp 90 degree edge on a piece of hardened and tempered steel. It doesn't have to be tempered, it just has to be fucking hard. But you cannot do it without that. They will not work. None of them. And that the hard ones you get, you tend to... The main difference between the two, I've never, I have never got one of these that I couldn't make work. And I've been using these for 22 years, I think. I think I picked up the first one on a course with Remy is in 95. 27 years. And I've never found one of these that I couldn't make work. That didn't work absolutely fine for me. But you have to have the right striker. Period. Now, I have here, I am a sword knife. Not knocking this at all. Good steel. L6 Swedish steel. Hard and tempered. Really well. Now, the back is feels sharp, it feels pretty flat, but it's not, I've never done anything to it, so this is how it came, but it feels, you'd think, oh yeah, if I scrape that on my finger, that feels pretty sharp, but in reality, now you can hear this, yeah. now there is a bit of a sharp bit, as where it's been edged to the bottom, you can, oh, I'm say I did get some sparks earlier, I mean, you can hear from that I'm not babying it. Yep. Yeah. That's nothing to do with the steel or the quality of the heat treatment. It's just that that spine is not sharp. Now, I've got a knife I did here quite a while ago. It's just knocking around here. I use it in the kitchen now, actually. It's brilliant. <laughs> the wife won't touch it because I keep it sharp. <laughs> um, but I didn't particularly do anything with this. I just cleaned it up. However, as you can see, much easier. I'm not even having to press on as much. That's nothing to do with the heat treatment. It's the fact that the edge is sharp. It has been hardened and tempered properly, just like the L6. And it's nothing the fact that it's O1 or L6. It's purely because that back edge is a bit sharp. And that would do for most things. However, you then get something that is designed to work with a ferro rod, a sharp 90 degree spine. Back on fire. And as you can see, nothing, no change to the ferro rod, nothing different in the technique. It's the difference between having a 90 degree spine on a piece of hardened and tempered steel, something that's a little bit rounded, and something that actually hasn't been cleaned to do that job. If your ferro rod is not working, get a better edge to scrape it with. Even if that means putting something, hammer your knife into a piece of wood, get a file and file the back of your knife. Get some wet and dry and sand it. Get that edge sharp. If you get that edge sharp, your ferro rod will work. Whether it's a cheapo from 
bloody, I don't know, wherever, or you're buying a light my fire job for $20. The difference is the piece of steel you're scraping it with. Off my soapbox. And these are what I put in all of mine. Now these are actually quite soft. They wear down pretty quickly. But what I find is I can I can get a lot of shavings off these very, very easily and then I can light them. So that's why I like I prefer the softer ones. The harder ones last longer. Who gives a shit? I like, you know, I don't know how many fires I'll light, you know, and cookers and stoves have been I've been I've been using I've used this one now for ages, testing every single back edge and everything I do, you know. So there we go, off my soapbox. So with that, that's a bit of a ramble there. A couple of learning points, a um, couple of bits of where I'm at, um, things I'm constantly learning with the leather, it's constantly researching. I, don't, you can't, I just don't go out and make something, I research things, I look at patterns, designs, how people do things the best way, how people recommend, changes in finishes and things like that. All cost money, all takes time. So uh, with that, I'm going to uh, stop my ramble now and I will thank you for listening to my ramble. Anybody who has, have a subscribe, have a like. Um, Bush Bimbler, Instagram, um, Bushcrafting NZ on uh, you, uh, Facebook, and Custom Knives NZ on Facebook. Just trying to get people together. Um, if you want to sell things on there, that's absolutely fine and stuff like that. Whatever. It's but just trying to get people together, get people known out there. I've just found a guy in Wellington who makes knives pure by by fluke. Just it cropped up on Facebook. You know, I just but. You know, you know, as I've said before why I'm doing that, you know, there's just not enough of us to get enough buying power to get, you know, to get anything going. Whereas, you know, Europe and the UK and stuff, it's a, you know, there's such a massive network of it. So with that, I'll go and see if the most beloved's ready for her Sunday morning walk. Um, I'm get a nice cup of coffee on the way back. And if I forget my wallet, she'll have to buy it. <laughs> and uh, so I'll catch you on the next one, guys. If I think of anything else to ramble, I'll stick another vlog on. Um, and, you know, just try and reinforce a few of these bits. Um, hope that was interesting and hope you're having a great weekend and uh, I'll catch you again guys. Thank you for watching.